Welcome to the Windy City Bender Podcast with your hosts, Noli, Boatsy, and Jerem. Welcome to episode 54 of the Windy City Bender Podcast. Third time's a charm. Uh, tuning in here from uh, from the old stomping grounds. I'm in my old house here, fellas. It's weird. Um, everybody's in here uh, cute, on Skype. Cute Thanks. We turned it actually Maddie's old room into a, a little TV room, so that's kind of nice. Um, Jesus. What with the game? No, you you're, you're <laughs> freezing and jumping and. Oh, I'm I'm pretty clear right now. He's clear as shit to me. Yeah. Yeah. You keep breaking up. Yeah. Um. Well, as you can hear, we're here on Skype. Uh, got Noli. How are you? Hi. Hi. <laughs> you really want to be here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also got Tanner, drunk at home. Hey, what's up? You know, <laughs> drinking all day, not a big deal. Oh my god. And then we've also got, uh, we also got Jerem. Hey, what's up, As boys? well. So, uh, we are just wrapping up the, uh, final minute here of the Columbus and Tampa game. Columbus is up two to one. They're about to get an empty netter. They already now. got it. Yeah. Three one. Oh my God. Columbus what? Is up Josh three Anderson? To... Josh Anderson. That's all. It's in suck a dick. They're up three games to none on Tampa Bay. This is the most incredible thing. Game's not over yet. So playoffs are going on. Let's talk about Hawks talk though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll jump into uh, we'll jump into playoffs here in a hot minute. Um, take a look at my brother right now, rocking his Sergey Bobrovsky jersey, <laughs> his Russian Sergey Bobrovsky jersey. <laughs> um, so the oh, draft lottery, focus. the draft lottery uh, happened last week, and the Blackhawks wow. incredibly jumped up to the number three spot. Collusion. People are so pissed online, and it's hilarious. It's it's so funny, and my favorite part about it is Edmonton fans that are like, "That's fucking bullshit." <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, do you guys realize you have had so many first round picks? <laughs> they had three now, first overall now, picks in a row. <laughs> You literally just drafted one of the best players of all time. and But the Hawks getting third overall is collusion to you. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, what I was watching it, and it was like the 12th pick. I'm like, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. And it wasn't the Hawks. I was like, oh, my God, here we go, here we go. And every time they pulled it, it wasn't the Hawks. I was so fucking excited. Something and they got like three. And I was like, there's Shut no up. way they get the first overall. Well, right. Stoked. Well, right before unreal. people people were laughing at me at work because I was fucking losing it. It was just great. It was a great time. I don't give a fuck. They got top. Well, three picks. well it was like five minutes before the draft, though. <laughs> five minutes before the draft started, the draft lottery started. There was that leaked tweet of the image that. Yeah. yeah where did you find that? It was somebody tweeted it. I don't so know where. Yes, I don't know where they found it, but it I had. Guess- I guess it popped up during like the lottery draft. Like they actually like they came back from a commercial and like that was on the screen. Yeah. Jersey, Jersey Rangers and Blackhawks just highlighted. It's like, yes, I was, I was, it was insane. I was at work when you guys were all texting about it, and that was one of the first things I saw. And I go, you gotta be fucking kidding me, absolutely. (laughs) Can go? Are you fucking kidding me? And when I saw that image, and I was like, "Oh, top three, baby!" I was like, "I don't give a shit." Top three, and then fucking thought we got third overall. It was kind of like, ah, it's disappointing, but like, top three, baby, let's fucking go. And yeah, once. Like, Fuck this! It doesn't matter. Once we saw we were the third instead of the first, it was like almost disappointing. But it's yeah. like. I know. You can't be upset. It was we, right. we were supposed to get twelve. Yeah, you go from twelve to three. Fucking... Jumping nine spots out of nowhere. Hey, hey, more like six to midnight, am I right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> thing. Just pulling a fucking Winnipeg back in uh what, two thousand sixteen with fucking Line A. Line A? Mm-hmm. Just 
just going from like 14th overall to like two, like it feels kind of like that. We got pretty good luck at plucking three, though. You know, everybody besides Cam Barker not doing too shabby. <laughs> yeah, don't don't talk about that. That one's so yeah. Well, Jonathan Tate, Dennis Savard. Don't talk about it. The Blackhawks Instagram was like Dennis Savard, fucking Eddie Olchek, fucking right. Jonathan Taves. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> And no Cam Barker. The comments were like, well, what about Cam Barker? It's like We got Nick Letty out of him. It was great. Yep. We got Nick Letty <laughs> and Kim Johansson, who scored in his first game as a Blackhawk, by the way. What uh, happened to him? Um, it's pretty good. So, yeah, uh, looking at, like, the way it looks like pool is going to go, it looks like everybody's picking Dylan Cousins to go third overall this year. And I started looking at some of his highlights. Um, so not everybody's saying Dylan Cousins, but that's what some of them are saying. I was looking at his highlights. Yeah, but I watched some of his highlights. I didn't like his highlights. Looking at Dylan Cousins, 6'3", 180 pounds. He's pretty light boy, but he's pretty tall. He kind of looked like he's played in the WHL. Um, he kind of looked like another Dylan Strome to me, like from his highlights. Like he looked that can move or jump in front of the net like and he had a fucking rocket of a shot so wouldn't be too bad for the hawks and he's a center right winger so i mean he can play either way my favorite thing about uh what i saw online of somebody being like hey let's draft dylan cousins was the fact that if we drafted dylan cousins we can do a cousins sakura strom line the Dylan just, line? The dilly, dilly, dilly line. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say trade the pick, but now you got to take him. Oh, oh, yeah. The other thing, too, is, like, I saw people that were like, oh, let's get, like, Byram. And, like, we don't need more defense. Like, we don't need more offensive defensemen. We already have, like, so many, like, and I'm like, let's get a forward. And then it's like, oh, there's about, like, eight different people that we can choose at third overall that, like, there's no defense. It's, like, one and two, clearly, Hughes and Kako. And then it's, like, anyone else within the top ten could go third overall. And you're, like, like, but if you want a defenseman, Byron. Boom. Got it. And it's, like, well, we don't really need that. Right. That's the, that's the thing. It's, like, there's a couple guys that, like you said, that the forwards that are – could easily go third overall, and it's yeah. like, I I mean, you might as well go with a highly talented forward instead of going down and getting the first defenseman when you could have got them at like what you would have had like twelve or something like that. You might as well grab a yeah. forward that's that's highly highly skilled, best available kind of situation. Because yeah. I mean, we're not, yeah. we're, it's not like <laughs> us. We're banking on whoever this kid's gonna be to be like the savior. You know, that's it's too. It's like you a draft to get somebody to make an immediate impact or are you drafting to get somebody to make an impact within a couple years to get somebody within a couple years might as well draft down and like get someone that you can get with that pick to make an immediate impact and exactly and then the person that you draft can come up later like we don't really need to wait on this pick like we can fucking like toss it for someone like a top four defenseman like we need instead if, if this was last year i would say hell yeah we have to keep this pick this is an incredible turn of events third first of all round, last third, year, third overall pick 100 percent. no i don't give a shit last year we got adam boquist and hell fucking yes because that motherfucker has like 10 goals in like seven games in the ohl or like the chl play- the playoffs yeah, right. he's a defenseman, and kid please, is tearing it up. Not- please bring on the Eric Carlson fucking light. Like I'm fine with that. Like, like oh my god, the I Boquist. Wait, the oh. Boquist Yoki Haru D pairing that's gonna happen in what like two years? I am so stoked for it. Like, look at this. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm telling you, boy, I'm ready for it. I fucking don't, can't I, wait. I don't even want them to be a D pairing because they are both right-handed defensemen. It's just, I, it's like, I want Yokoharu with, like, Murphy. Boom. Right hand, left hand. Fucking Murphy will just hold down the defense like Yalmerson used to do with, like, Keith and shit like that. Like, 
nonstop defensive, and then Yoko Haru can go, or both can go, and they, they just fire it up. And then if we have still, like, Gustafson, but honestly, when they come up, Gustafson probably is going to cost too much money, or we will lose fucking, like, Strom or Debrinkit. Fuck it. Go, like, I fucking love Gus. God damn it. Like, what a <laughs> fantasy pickup. <laughs> fucking love that guy. What what realistically are the chances that the that the Hawks end up trading that number three overall pick? And if they do, when do they do it? I I don't. If it does happen, draft if it day. Does, I say it's draft day. It is draft day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think they do it though. I don't know actually. I really I, don't. I, I really think they. You need somebody right now. I mean, you don't necessarily have to have. Yeah, that and pick. it's it's. But everybody takes into like. The years that you're giving up on a player that you can, like, that you can just have. Like, their age comes into, like, such a big part of it where it's like, okay, we give up this fucking third overall for, like, a 24-year-old draft pick. Cool. But, like, what if we drafted somebody at 18 and they can make an immediate impact? It's like, we're giving up six years of that player to meet the age of the player we just got, we're losing six years. Like, they take age so much into it. And, like, you don't really see people, dra- like, getting rid of top three draft picks anymore at all. Like Arizona. Dylan Strong. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Dylan Strom is Whoops. basically uh, yikes. Our- our third overall draft pick from that year because, man, we're doing really good at third overall draft picks. Yeah. Take Strom. <laughs> Cam Barker. Cam Barker. <laughs> Strom. Oh, can I – I just – I I want to go back to, like, August or whenever we did that podcast and just eat every word I said about <laughs> Strom. I just knocked myself and, out before he said it. just – you know but, what? Like, no. I'm so glad that all of us wrote him off as like a bust, and then, and then everybody like because everybody listens to our podcast and they're like, "Wow, maybe he is a bust," and they're just like, "We should get rid of him. We're getting Nick Schmaltz. What a dog! We're <laughs> yeah, so, Nick uh, Schmaltz." And they're like, "Fucking easy payment, Perlini and Perlini and fucking Strom." And then we get I, Schmaltz, should... or no, we get Strom. I've been drinking. Um, and we get Strom, and we're like, "Yes." <laughs> Play for us forever, please. <laughs> Should I just toss up the audio of just ripping on Strom on Instagram after this episode? No. <laughs> exactly. like that episode. He's the most amazing player in the world, and we wish the Hawks had him. Yeah, go for it. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. Have that video, then don't play it. <laughs> <laughs> can we uh can we just dub this whole segment over that episode yeah, right just, like, <laughs> i think that's a good idea. That? <laughs> no but like i mean <laughs> none of that kind of came in oh but yeah what? so i mean I don't, I don't know what do you guys think i mean i it i don't i don't think they're gonna move the trade but then listening to how bowman's talking like going into this off season, how there's going to be changes. Like I just, I, how many I feel times like there might be? How many times have you heard that though? Like, well, he's, he's also gone back on it. He's like, there's going to be changes, and then he's like, Schmaltz and Hartman are part of our long term plans. No, Hinnestrosa as well. Oh, I'm sorry, Hinnestrosa. Yeah. No, Hartman was part of it too. Um, but then Hartman and Osterly. Hartman turned into Yoko Harju, right? No. Uh, no, no Yoko Haru was the year before. We already had him. No. Yeah, yeah it was um, the twenty eighth pick. Uh, be, uh, I always. Bowden. Yeah. That's what Hartman was. Hartman was Bowden. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Victor Edsel. Evan Barrett. Not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Uh, uh sh- and Chad Chris. Not a big deal. I'm just. Uh, yeah. And- um. Man, I mean, I kind of want Bowman to just be like, hey, like, they're here to stay and trade them for picks because those picks turn out to be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Better than the actual player that we have. Yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> so, but I mean, 
honestly, like if they do make the trade, who do they go for? Who do you guys like realistically think you can get for that trade? For defenseman. Goss's beer. Did you say Goss's beer? Ghost bear. Stop drinking. No wine in his hand. Uh, yeah, I've got a wine. I've got, got, got a wine over here. Got a wine. Uh, give me a minute. I'm going to refill my glass. I need a deep mm-hmm. Um, uh, you got to go for a top four D uh, though, right? I mean, oh yeah, yeah. But like realistically, who could you get? Like you have, if you're trading a top three pick <laughs> for a top four defenseman, you you have to you have to give something up too. Like you're not going to get like an Eric well, yeah. Carlson say for no, a top three pick. You have to throw something else in there. So, so I mean, you're gonna have what to... do you guys think would be gone, and what do you think you can get back? So here's here's what I was thinking. They've got enough cap space right now. And it could even turn into more to where they could sell off one of those contracts like an Anisimov or a Sod or something like that that's too much money right. and be able to eat that contract and well, still get somebody back. Well, first of all, I think that Sod would still – I would like to keep Sod for the record. Sod, Sod would give us more value than trying to trade it off. Like that's Anisimov. my thought too. I, I feel like that would – that would that's, that's he's so much more of like a two-way player that like – his value comes from that rather than like his contract bringing it down. Plus, there's only two years left on it, and I feel like there's plenty of teams that would probably go for Assad. Anisimov, I feel like that's one of those ones where like if we packaged him with the third overall, like we'd probably be able to get something like middle between, like right in between like Anisimov and the third. You know, right? They'd have to retain like fifty percent of the contract or something in order to get anything like decent back. Oh know. no! Anything I, like extravagant back, like oh, only, is that what you're I saying? Think, I think he only has like two years left as well. But yeah, if, two years at four point five. Like if if the Hawks were to trade an Ismoff in the third, that would that would be like getting a a decent player and maybe like a middle first round pick back. You know what I'm saying? That's just kind of getting rid of an Ismoff. And, like, I don't think we really need to. Like, we need to, like, make moves once we need to, like, make these contracts for Debrinkit and Strom and, and Gustafsson and, like, free up this cap space because we have so much tied up in Kane, Taves, Keith, and Seabrook. And Seabrook has the longest contract of anybody right now, which is until, like, 20-fucking-23, <laughs> Well, that could be that could be another thing too. You know, they can try and dish him off. I mean, he's a little Plus bit old. Twenty twenty four. Would you guys be willing to package that third round pick with like a Seves or a Duncan Keith if it meant getting like very little back as as much as like just cap space back and maybe a draft pick or cover couple? It would have to be yeah. – Keith logs a lot of minutes. I mean, however bad he is, he logs a lot of minutes. I mean, and that's going to end up being a pretty – Doesn't decent... – No, but it's going to end up being a pretty big hole to fill. You could throw Yoki Haru in that slot, and he'll do just as good as Keith is. Well, Yoki no, Haru, but I'm saying if you would want to replace him with somebody, you'd want him to, you'd want to replace him with somebody who can do even better than what he's been doing so far, not somebody so, who can just well, here, so then, he left off. So then what if you take – Package, say, Keith, if we're going with that example. Package Keith with a third. Don't take any players back. Take no. let's, and take the cap space and go for something in free agency like one of these big-name defensemen free agents. That's Garrett dangerous. Carlson. That's dangerous, though, because what if they don't sign and then you're screwed? Yeah. No, that's, guess, that's... There's, there's no way in hell they would package the third overall with Keith because Keith is still like a well-sought-after defenseman that's a veteran. That... You would get something back, though. But he has a very good cap hit. It's like if we did the third overall and Seabrook would be basically like the Tara Vining situation where you to package Bickle with something great in order to get a little bit. Right. Like that's what it would be. For the you record, too, I was saying Seabs. You wouldn't, do, you wouldn't do the third and Keith because, like I said, like Keith's contract is actually really fucking good. No matter how much he can go downhill, like you're still getting a guy that is conditioning his is crazy. It's fucking insane, and like he can still skate out there. No one's saying that he can play defense that great, but also right. no one really watches the Hawks as much as we do, and just be like noticing like these smallest mistakes all the time. 
and just being frustrated. Like, it, it, if you if you really want to try and move a guy with a cap space, I think Keith is going to be like with that pick. Keith is going to be your best option because oh, I actually I don't know. The entire taking Seabrook for that. I don't Seabrook for that. There's not that third overall pick. That's that's like oh I don't give a shit we'll take Seabrook for this guy like I don't. Right. What about Keith and the third? <laughs> I'm just saying. Get the GM is Keith Seabrook in the third. Get whatever GM you want to trade that to as drunk as you are and we might have a deal. Fuck. We'll take the lock <laughs> about the twenty. Senators. Uh, God. Or Arizona Coyotes, we're best friends. Give me a uh, Jacob Chikrin. <laughs> so wait. <laughs> Let's talk oh, about. And Yalverson. And Yalverson back. Chikrin, Yalverson, boom. He, he broke the third. I'm fucking fine with it. I don't give a shit. Yeah, we'll give you your third back that we took from Dylan Strom. <laughs> yeah, you, can try again. you can try again. We'll give you, we'll give you someone <laughs> else in the future. It's fine. <laughs> we'll just take it back. Jumping back real quick to what Jerem said about possibly trading Keith and that third overall and getting very little in return. The one way that I would kind of be okay with that is if the Hawks try to move up. So if they traded that off to the Devils or for to the Rangers. For Kako or fucking Hughes. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, that I would be okay with that. I mean, still maybe get something back in return, like maybe like a, the a thing middle is, of the pack defenseman or something. Neither of those teams are going to do that. New Jersey and the Rangers are not moving I, those picks. No, I don't think they are either. But that would be the only way that I'm, I feel like it would be an okay move. I was going to say, unless they want to go for a defenseman and they want, like, Byram. If they wanted Byram so bad and then they wanted, like, Keith to be, like, a mentor – it's like, cool, you get a third, you get the guy that you want, and you just lose two spots or a spot in the draft. Yeah, go for that. Like, if you're not going for a center or a wing like like Kako or fucking Hughes, and, like, you'd be cool with having, like, a cornerstone defenseman and a Norris Trophy winner being, like, two pieces to add rather than one. Yeah, but I don't think that's what they want. I feel like, everybody, like that's the thing with... I guess just me. They hype up. It's Hughes or Kako, no matter what. That's what you're getting, one or two. And everything else falls off a cliff. And it makes it seem like no matter what third, it's nowhere near the two of them. If it yeah. was like much closer and being like, hey, like, honestly, like this defenseman who's fucking awesome would be really good if you needed a defenseman at first overall. And then they would be like, hey, maybe let's just trade down and the Hawks could trade up and get rid of, like, some cap space. And, like... If only it was the 03 draft, am I right? Oh, God, don't even right? start this. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I should... Let's talk! <laughs> no, we let's, don't have the time. Let's actually see where uh, that pulls at real quick. So... Ryan Getzlaff, Corey Perry. Let's oh, talk God. about them getting drafted. <laughs> I regret it immediately. I'm 75% so sorry. of people want to see a Tanner 03 draft episode this offseason. Okay. But that, I, 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 I love like, the 03 draft. It's like four people voted on that shit right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so three out of four people. That's all you got to say. Three out of four people enjoy Tanner talking about the 2003 draft. You want to hear it? <laughs> so, all right. So, wrapping up this, are we? So, we're pretty much like split right now. Like, whether we should trade it or keep it. I think yeah. they trade it. Like, I don't think that we need to dump cap space in order to like trade that. I don't want to be a Terra Vine situation. I want it to be like, hey, let's use this to be better in the future. But, but that that's the thing. It, it could be used as not a terrifying situation where you're getting rid of a draft pick instead of a prospect. Well, I would rather not see them like trade away the third and like Perlini for like cap space, you know, like some shit like that. Like the Hawks, like they do like off season moves. I don't know. I, I don't think they trade it. All right. I think, with, I think with the way that the NHL has been drafting lately, it's like no one trades top three picks because it can be something spectacular. Yeah. It's just Arizona gave up too early on theirs. You know, right. 
like you can you can get something absolutely amazing out of a top three pick, and you should. Like, even if like Cap like Capo Caco and fucking like Jack Hughes are like highly touted, Pierre Luc Dubois was a third overall, and he is unreal for Columbus. Like, if we can fucking like PLD, like that's fucking sick. Like they didn't even draft like who they thought was supposed to go third overall. Because Paul Yarvi went to fucking Edmonton. Edmonton's looking to fucking trade him because they don't know what the fuck to do. Right. It's a whole different to talk about them. <laughs> we we got into drafting. I'm all about it. Like <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't know, but it's sneakily. I've been talking about it. Not the Hawks have been drafting really well. Their first round picks or their like anything like they drafted to bring it. He. I told you guys, I looked up stats. <laughs> Stat guy, fucking, within his first two years, he is fourth in points for rookies in their first two years of playing. He is, no matter how old they are, their first two years of playing, these past two years, he's fourth. And it's fucking awesome. Besides, what was it, uh, Matthews, Line A, and uh, I think... I forget who the third one was, but besides the th- those three, to bring it had more goals this year than anybody else in their draft. Yep. Has in their career so far. Fucking yeah, greasy he has more cat, goals baby. In his career than anyone in the past. And they were drafted the same time, like three years. He's just a fucking beast, and we gotta get him on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> we gotta we gotta get him on the pod, bro. Greasy cat. Greasy cat. I just want right. to stutter. <laughs> let's uh, let's move on to a uh, big coaching change down in Florida. Uh, our guy, Coach Q, get the job. I want Q to get a nice tan going and then halfway through the year to shave his mustache off. And then you, you won't even tell the difference between when he shaves it and not because it'll just be a big white mark across his lip from you know his tan. It'd be great. And it's just like, ah, oh, I'm not in Chicago anymore. I can't do this thing. But I still got the mustache. The first time. I thought it was funny, though, because when, when he got introduced, uh, he was like, from the very beginning, this is where me and my family wanted to be. And I was just like, yeah, I, I bet it was. I mean, it's 70 degrees in December. Do you know like all this stuff, why this is the perfect fit for him? So first off, Dale Talon, his buddy, he's going to have Boom. free range there. The owner of the Florida Panthers is a big horse guy. He was huge on horse racing. He's in fucking Florida. He's not going to be in goddamn Chicago in December or fucking in April. Yeah, but he loved uh, tailgating for the Bears. Yeah, He did. Taking uh, ski shots. Yeah. Also, uh, playoff hockey. Have you seen it in Florida? Because Tampa is fucking with the damn thing. Have won just as many playoff games as the Lightning this year. Oh! Got him. Suck a dick. Did you guys hear uh, the very first statement that Q made when uh, when he uh, was doing the press conference? No. So he goes, I want to thank you guys for uh, welcoming me. And he thanked Dale Talon. He thanked the, the president. And he thanked uh, the owner and everything like that. And then he goes, I want to thank all the players for coming out and, you know, uh, coming out to, um, you know, the press conference today everything like that. Uh, he goes, I know it's a Monday and it's early in the morning, but do you know what other teams are doing right now? Other teams right now are getting off the ice from their morning skate, getting ready for their first round playoff matchup. And you guys are here watching me doing a press conference next year. At this time, we're going to be getting off our home ice, getting ready for our first round matchup. And we're not going to have to do this again. And I was literally, I was watching this at work, having a very productive day. And I was like, I had chills (laughs) going down all like all of my extremities i was so jacked just by watching that and then you uh, remembered he's like, not here you know anymore what you're right now you're, you know what you kid could do get me in college <laughs> suck my dick fucking, i fucking love q so much he is so perfect for like that kind of squad that really oh, yeah that shit Fuck, I mean, we were talking about Tampa Bay. Like, doesn't Ku- like Kucherov has the same amount of points as <laughs> Markov in the playoffs, right? 
Yeah. He, yeah. He took le- he play. took less money to coach Florida than what he got offered in Philly because he wanted to coach Barkoff. Yeah, well, he's making six million in Florida instead of making the six million from Chicago, so he's gonna be making a lot more because yeah, of know. state income tax and not a big deal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and also, he's gonna get Artemi Panarin to sign in Florida and get reunited with Artemi again. Hey, they might get Bobrovsky too. Yeah, I know it's gonna end up being a package deal. I I can bet that. And so almost, wait, Bobrovsky, uh, playoff performer right now. Bobrovsky. You <laughs> know. Or no, two and oh, zero. Oh. Shit, I'm just. So I don't want to get in too much. I've been drinking today. today. <laughs> I don't know about that. But... So I don't think we should get in too much detail because we did interview our boy Matt Ross and a pretty good detail with him about the Florida Panthers since he's writing for Hockey Buzz. Florida Panthers, check out his blogs. Maybe we should just cut to his interview right now before we get too much into it. Yeah, let's send it on over. All right, now we are glad to bring on. The 6'1", Scorpio, man who loves brunettes, a.k.a. his wife, <laughs> DC comic <laughs> blogger, now with the hockey buzz, writing for the Florida Panthers, the Chicago Blackhawks, Nicholas Jarmelson. We have Ross for the Windy City Benders. Welcome aboard, Matt. Glad to have you. Hey, thanks for having me. What an intro. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty good, man. I, I wasn't expecting that. It's pretty funny. Hey, I mean, you did all that. We we just uh we just put it out there for everyone to hear. Yeah, didn't know if it was actually be used. That's, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> so how you doing today, man? Uh, pretty good. How about you? Doing good. So good. Uh, yeah, so you've been writing for uh, Hockey Buzz for the Panthers. How long have you been doing that? Um, you know what? I started. I was talking on Hockey Buzz. Uh, kind of. Man, I don't know, for quite a bit, just kind of as a lurker, just kind of reading blogs, posting on there in the comments sections for a number of years now. And then um, more so recently, I started kind of talking with the guys there and kind of weaseled my way into submitting some um, fan blogs for the Panthers. They didn't have anyone writing anything, so I thought, eh, maybe I'll just throw some stuff out there. And uh, one thing led to another, and they just said, hey, why don't why don't you just uh, – come aboard as a freelancer so um officially i don't know i've been the probably the second half of the season okay. till now so just kind of keeping that ball rolling yeah i was gonna say man it looks like you've been doing it for years with how many articles you've been writing jesus <laughs> we pull up the page and it was like every day you got a new one coming out yeah trying to keep it cranking so we'll see <laughs> yeah so was um always a Panthers fan or did you kind of just see that they were the missing missing factor right there? They didn't have everybody writing for them. Oh, a combination. So, I mean, obviously, you know, Hawks guy growing up in the Chicago area. So all the um, Hawks going down there kind of help. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when they came up, when they came on the scene, I don't know, man, I was what probably when they got really, well, they were good when they started, obviously, <laughs> Um, and I was a, I was growing up and I was a Van Beesbrook fan. So I don't know. I always kind of liked him from there. I liked Mel and B and Jovanowski and stuff like that. And just kind of always kept my eye on them. And then later on, um, kind of helped that they were frequent dance partners with the Hawks. So just kept my interest. And then I noticed there was a need for a writer for him. So I don't know. It just kind of <laughs> worked out, I guess. Yeah. Um, so looking back at this season, obviously the Panthers weren't in the playoffs at all. I mean, was there anything that stood out to you? What, what was your overall impression on the season so last year? Uh, definitely um, a Jekyll and Hyde kind of team. Uh, you know, one night you'd get a really good solid performance. Maybe they string together a few games that were really good. They had a number of like three to four game winning streaks and then would just crumble. Mm-hmm. Um, so you kind of didn't know what you were getting each night. Uh, and I think a big, big factor, a bit, you know, a thing that most fans can agree is is the defense was just pretty atrocious at times. So, oh, well, it didn't help either that you had some key goalie injuries with Luongo. And, yeah, going back and so, forth between goalies a lot. Yeah, so it was kind of a combination of those two things on the back end. But, I we, mean, it's, it's crazy how much they paralleled the Hawks in a way where you had guys having career years and then just sort of, disappointing not making the playoffs yeah i was just um, gonna say how did you feel about barkov obviously he tore it up almost hit 100 points in the into the 90s i mean 
Oh yeah, guy's unbelievable. He plays both ways too, which is yeah. really cool. You know, he's not just a just an offensive minded guy. He gets back and helps out, breaks up plays, and yeah, Hoffman that went off too. Yeah, what a what a pickup from his his amazing time in San Jose. What a move to get him. I know, yeah. Boy, boy, it was tough. Probably, probably tough getting him out of San Jose, yeah. but um, what a what a savvy vet, uh, what a savvy move by uh, Talon. Yeah, yeah. No, he did light it up this year. I, I was kind of not expecting him to do that as well as he did down there, but yeah, he had a great year. Yeah, he did. He really played well. So they go the off season, um, immediately fire their coach. Uh, was that something that you kind of heard was going to happen, or did that kind of just come out of nowhere? Uh, I, I think everyone, I think a lot of fans and and myself were kind of thinking like, yeah, maybe this is going to happen because there were so many rumors about Q. But I honestly did not think that they could get him. I thought it was more so just like wishful thinking from a lot of people. I thought Bugner would get fired but i didn't know who they would get to replace them and it was very surprised when they got q um and i think uh you know it's, it's nothing against bugner or anything like that but um obviously you get that winning pedigree with q so that's why there's so much excitement and then you get a guy who's going to you know hold guys accountable and he's gonna be able to mold these young guys because man watching last year there was a lot of a lot of times where guys would cough the puck up, turn the puck over, they'd make the same mistakes over and over again. And yet no one was really, you know, they weren't missing shifts. They weren't getting benched. They weren't in the press box. And, you know, not that like you have to do that stuff, but I think it's kind of nice to see it. And I think it sends a message to players. And I think, you know, Q, kind of a no BS guy, I think he's going to be able to come in and kind of take the reins and mold these, these young, talented dudes. I think that's what they're really missing. So we'll think- see. And I think you really set the tone too with that press conference, having the whole team there uh-huh. and just pretty much ending it with like, yeah, don't get used to this. You know, we should be getting ready for the playoffs right now. This is the last oh, time yeah. this is going to happen. I totally agree. He's, uh, he's already, <laughs> the gears are already turning. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, he said it a few times that this team reminds him a lot of the Hawks when he came to the Hawks. So it's going to be, Oh, it's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I have, don't watch too many Panthers games, but like listen to what you're saying about they have they uh, every time I watch them they have so much talent. There's so many young good players there, but yeah. like you said, they just they just kind of do what they want. Like they should be a lot better than they are every single year. Everybody thinks that they're going to make the playoffs this year. It's finally their year, and <laughs> yeah, it just never pans out. Um, but knowing what Q did with the Hawks, you know what kind of guy he is. Obviously, I mean. <laughs> Do you think he can? Obviously, he's ready. Like we said, putting his full, full Q mode in so far. But like, what kind of impression do you think he's going to have right away with these guys? I think it's going to be a big one. I know I was watching some player interviews just from that press conference, and a lot of those guys were obviously, you know, sort of in awe uh, and admiration of him just being there. Yeah. So I think he's kind of already. I mean, he has obviously he has that sort of like ilk and presence and so um i i I really think those guys are gonna feed off of them uh at least i'm hoping Mm -hmm. so i mean we'll see i mean obviously it's it's very exciting but uh we gotta get gotta get next season going to see 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 how it all pans out so uh the big rumor going around was around the trade deadline too was that the Dale, Dale Talon was gearing up to you know make a run at um, Bob and even possibly Panarin? Do you think bringing Q in now, especially at least for Panarin, do you think that might have a little uh, influence in you know increase Florida chances of landing landing this type of free agent? I definitely do. Um, I actually think what I was really impressed with with Talon was um, obviously letting. Bugner go and then bringing Q in immediately, I thought sort of set the tone of like, we're here to hey, win. We're actually serious about, you know, being a very competitive team next year um, rather than like, you know, firing a coach and then months and months go by where it's like, well, we're talking to this guy and this, you know, we're waiting can- to see what happens. It was like immediately set the tone that, hey, we know where we need to be and how to get there. And like it starts with Q. And I think that's going to send a message kind of to the league. I think there's going to be a lot of guys interested in Florida now. And I think, uh, to your point, you know, obviously that rumor has been floating around a lot about Bob and Panarin. 
Um, I definitely think there's a possibility they get him. I think Panarin's more the uh, the luxury of the uh, off season. If they can get him, that'd be awesome. But definitely shoring up, you know, the blue paint with Bob would be huge. And they got to do something. They got to make a move on defense. I don't yeah. know, you know, what it is, but if if they can bring a more defensive minded guy, proven guy in, I think that would be huge. Um. But then, obviously, yeah, if they can get the package deal of Bob and Panera, that would be awesome. Yeah, it's definitely uh, another step in the right direction. Yeah, we were just going to bring up the next bullet we had was, uh, what are the areas do they need improvement? So, obviously, you think the defense needs a, a bunch of uh, improving there. Yeah, you know, I, I um, man, they turn the puck over so much, unfortunately. And we're kind of mm. in that, I feel like we're in that era now of uh, the NHL where the game is changing a uh, a bunch where you're seeing more kind of smallish defensemen come in who are more puck moving guys and kind of think more offensively. Um, and I think we're kind of missing that. We're missing that defensive minded guy, the shutdown guy. Uh, and so, you know, I don't know when I, when I look at the, when I look at the Panthers defense, you know, I like like Josh Brown a lot. Um, I like Mark uh, Pysik a lot. They're both kind of more defensive minded guys. Um, and you got a guy, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mike Matheson. Do you know who he is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that guy's skating build is incredible. Uh, and he's sort of the new age formula, but, uh, he just, he struggles with turnovers and things like that. So I'll be curious to see if, you know, what Q and Talon do in order to, uh, fix that defense up. But, um, there's a couple of guys I could see Q keeping around. I think he's going to like Uyghur, um, like Brown, like I said. Um, I'm kind of curious about that Brady Keeper guy that they the, – the Inuit guy that they brought in. Oh, yeah. It's kind of a cool story. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so I don't know. There's some – I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. You got Yandel. I'm just okay on Yandel. I'm not a huge Yandel guy. <laughs> he, was, but... he was one of the guys that would, seemed really stoked to have Q come in, though. Oh, was he? Okay, I, did, I didn't see his reaction. Was he pumped? Yeah, I saw a couple things on Twitter where he was real impressed by what Q said right away, and he's he's stoked. It looks like he's ready to be part of a winning team finally, again. Like, yeah. Finally, like, a shot, you know. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I know we talk about it on the podcast saying that, you know, plus-minus is such a relevant stat. Like, we don't, we're not big plus-minus guys, but I'm looking at the stats for the Florida Panthers for this past year. Four guys on the entire roster were the only ones that were a plus <laughs> Two of mm -hmm. them, two of them, only played one game, <laughs> and <laughs> one was that keeper guy. Um, yeah, so it's like definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 such like a weird stat, but at the same time, I mean, it still can show something. Yeah, that and that shows a lot that there's technically only one guy that was a plus, and that was Ekblad. Yeah, That's I insane. know it's kind of shocking <laughs> when you look at the numbers. Yeah. And I and, and I like Ekblad. I think there's still a ton of obviously potential with that guy. Um, I just want to see what Q's going to do when he comes in. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, definitely. Q loves shift, shuffling the lines up, and he loves keeping everybody on their toes. So yeah, I, and he is not afraid to hold people accountable. He doesn't care who it is. So yeah, like like you said, it's going to be interesting to see what he does and how this team performs under him. Yeah, and you know, it's not like when you you know, bench a guy for a couple of shifts. It's not, you know, <laughs> Q being a jerk. It's just like, you got to send a message. And I don't think a lot of these guys have gotten a message over the past couple of years from different coaches. Cause no one's really cracked the whip. And I think Q is the guy to do it. Um, so he should, he should be able to whip these guys into shape. It's going to be cool. So I'm also looking at the roster real quick, like age wise. I mean, they're, they're, they're a pretty young team. And they got a lot of young guys that are going to be like borderline coming up, like Owen Owen Tibbet and all that. Is there any concern about how Q doesn't really trust the rookies at all that much? I mean, like how he was in Chicago, very it was very str a struggle with him and Bowman about playing the young guys. Very short lease for those guys. Yeah, do you think that's going to be a huge concern coming down with a team that's going to be majority young guys? So it's funny you bring that up because I was thinking the same thing. Um, like the two two of the big knocks on Q have always been, well, he doesn't like to play young guys. And then um, the second one being uh, that he, you know, 
Q's blender. He likes to mix the lines up, likes to mix pairings up and this and that. And I was wondering, um, kind of the same thing you guys are, how the uh, Panthers fans will react to that. Um, I, I think Q was going to be okay with these young guys. He seems to be very enthused about them. So, which makes me believe that he's okay with playing them and uh, seeing what they have and what to, what he's got to work with. Um, I don't think there's going to be, you know, I feel like some of that stuff with Q towards the end kind of happened towards the end of his time in Chicago. And maybe it was just getting to the, I don't know, maybe it was getting to the time where things were, you know, breaking up a little bit and kind of deteriorating between him and the front office. And maybe he just kind of dug his feet in and that was it. Um, he seems very, he seems very open to the idea of having all these young guys in this young roster. So I'm expecting him to, uh, I'm expecting him to work well with them. So we'll see. I guess kind of looking at it, they're in two different spots too. Like with the Hawks, there were so many veterans that he could lean on and he could sit those younger guys where, in Florida, it's mostly younger guys, so you can't really sit them to lean on any of the veteran guys. It's more, more so you got to play what you with with what you have. Yeah, I mean that's a really good point, actually. I mean your your veteran guys on, on Florida are really like Yandel, Luongo, uh, Ekblad's kind of a you know. Yeah, yeah I was I gonna say Ekblad's kind of there. Now. He's twenty three. Yeah, <laughs> right. Barkov is twenty three, yeah. and he's like the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Hoffman, Barkoff, those guys, but yeah, you don't you don't have like those. I mean, Hawks had like really deep. Yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> of veterans. Yeah, Jarmelson, Zebra, Keith, those three guys got leaned on. You got Taze, Kane, Hosa, Saad up front, like right. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, so uh, we really appreciate you uh, coming on, and we don't want to take too much of your time. Um, we do have one more question that we like asking all the guests on the show. Um, mm -hmm. so you're a big hockey guy. You played and you lo obviously you love watching. So what is your, uh, all time favorite hockey memory? Um, either from your playing days or from just being a, uh, being a fan. Uh, oh man, tough question. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I'll be totally honest with you. Men's league is probably my favorite <laughs> thing about hockey that I, like ever. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I enjoyed playing growing up and Pee Wees and Bantams in high school and all that. But man, there's something way cooler about men's league. It's just I don't know. So, going out late, you know, <laughs> skating, having a beer maybe afterwards. I don't know. It's just it's fun. So just all of men's league is your favorite. Be, so <laughs> yeah, so all of men's league is just your favorite. Just the whole the whole concept. The whole experience. It's <laughs> just it's just loose. It's fun. Yeah. Love it. True, true guys guy right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. All right, Rossi. Well, thank you again so much for coming on. Uh, this is an absolute pleasure, and uh, we definitely got to have you on again soon. But yeah, no problem. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on, guys. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Thanks, Rossi. Take easy, man. Okay, later. All right, Matt Ross. Thank you so much for uh, for calling in, taking some time to talk about uh, the Florida Blackhawks. Uh, really, really happy to have you on. Uh, damn good men's league player too. We all love him on uh, on the benders. So. Heart, heart and soul. Real heart and soul guy. Really just lays it all on the line. Guy makes more saves Meat than me some nights. Almost every day. Almost every day. <laughs> you got it. Um, let's jump into the playoffs, fellas, because it's been absolutely insane. Reach going to take two, uh, two series, one from the east, one from the west. Um, I. Yeah, I just I, <laughs> thanks, Tanner. <laughs> this is the most. I love it. I love it. This is the most fucked up, frustrating play first round of playoffs I've ever seen in my entire life. Swear to God, my bracket. I don't even know what I picked anymore I because I have no idea what's going on. I'm afraid. I don't look. even care. I don't even care anymore. Like I, I have Tampa. I had Tampa to win it all, and I'm like, I don't give a shit if Tampa loses anymore. But bracket's broken if they get knocked out. I don't care. I don't give a the shit. The only reason. Only reason I'm going to start being upset about Tampa getting kicked out, especially in the first round, is because I've got three different bets that say that they're going to end up winning the cup at the end of the year. So that's just three bets that's just go down the drain. Why would you take that? There's no chance of them winning the cup. I just because didn't see it. it was it was like plus four hundred at the beginning of the year, and I was like, absolutely, I'm going to take that. Are you kidding? Hundred well, percent. I mean, like I don't really give a shit anymore because fantasy is over, and I just won anyway. I beat Noli. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> 
Like, I don't fucking. It's all Control good. It, Noli, it's don't cool. kick hey, him. Tanner, act like you've been there before. Oh, yeah, yeah. you haven't. That's oh. <laughs> Just been the commissioner for about five and a half years and uh, got you, nothing you ran, to show for until now. Right. Ran the league and still couldn't win it. Nice job, bud. But anyway, <laughs> since we're talking about Tampa Columbus, why don't we uh, why don't we get yeah. into that one? Yo, why don't we go ahead and jump point. in that one? Zach Ruinsky, fucking dropping the mitts. So Tampa and Columbus, just like everybody in the hockey world predicted, Columbus is up three zero right now. Um, what so, the actual fuck? Just really quick, um, no Presidents Trophy winner has ever been uh, swept in the first round. And if Tampa loses first round, it'll be the first time since 2012 when Vancouver got knocked out by L.A. Also, that's not even the most impressive thing. It's the fact that they also tied the record for most wins in a season. Yes. Then could possibly be swept. So here, this, yeah. my and opinion. And then they also had Kucherov, who tied their team in points with his points, could possibly be swept. Insane. So... Here's my thing going into the series now. At first, I thought they were just uh, Columbus had no shot. Um, now, the more that I look at it and I think about it, it was definitely the tale of Tampa not playing a relevant game in three months versus Columbus, who has been playing playoff hockey since the trade deadline. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, Columbus has been scratching and pawing to make sure they make it into the playoffs. I mean, they didn't. They weren't even in a playoff position when they made all those dread de- deadline deals, and Tampa's been in a playoff spot since fucking January. I mean, yeah. it's just it, – Columbus fucking wants it. Tampa doesn't. That's that's just what it comes down to, and Torts fucking fires those guys up. Like, that's just what it comes down to. The sweater vest that he wears. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about the fact that Torts was the coach of Tampa Bay when they won, yeah. and now he's coaching against them? With, like, the team of possible destiny right now. First of all, you have Artemi Panarin, who Stan Bowman claimed as not a playoff player. You have Matt Duchesne, who has never been to the playoffs and was acquired as a playoff player. And, and he- it's just like, these these guys are going to, like, Duchesne set the fucking record for franchise like playoff points in a game like the other day, like with the five to one win. It's like they want it so fucking bad. And I really I, I, wish I could relive that fucking Panarin goal from last year, game one against the Washington Capitals in that overtime game, because that goal was fucking disgusting. Yeah. Um they kinda remind me of Vegas last year where nobody had them doing anything in they just have the want. Oh, uh, and then after tonight, obviously they're up 3-0. They canceled all the haters out by saying that they're just going to pull what they did last year and go up 2-0 and lose. Yeah, how about, how about yes, so. game Hedman? two? Yeah, Hedman Victor Hedman. Like that? Oh. And then doesn't even play Doesn't even play game three. Did they actually yeah, say what out. his injury was? or? Nah, he looked like shit the first two games, too. Terrible. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely terrible. And then... So- also, not only having probably one of the top defensemen in the league, they were missing their the top goal score point getter in the league with Kucherov after his suspension. Was what do you guys think of that one? Was it a worthy of one game suspension? Should it have been more? I thought it should have been two. Eh, I'm very all about like let them play. I I honestly think like two games probably. Well, we can't like have them out for that long. Well, I mean, he didn't do anything the first two games anyways besides that hit. And it's not – it's it's just the NHL needs to be more consistent because, like, it. that's – you need to protect your players because that that's a frustrated player not controlling his emotions and intending to hurt somebody. He went straight for his head while he was yeah. on his knees. That's, that's just wanting to hurt a guy because you're fucking frustrated. And that's what bothers me. I understand, like, the fact of, like – if the player is on his knees, let me hit him. It's like, no. The play, they literally cannot reach further than their stick. Like, they have no fucking, they can't do anything. Like, why are you putting your fucking ass or. Go ahead, buds. It's different if he's falling and he's like going down and then you hit him. Like, that's totally Ooh. different. But I mean, he's down yeah. for <laughs> two, three seconds he got rid of at, the at one point. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, it's, I mean, like at that point, just glide into the guy and just press him against the boards. Don't throw your weight into him. Just bump him. Just kind of hold him up a little bit. That's all you yeah. have to do in that situation. Like, yeah, exactly. like, put your like put your body into like put your dick in his face. That's all you gotta do. Yeah, have him suck a part out your butthole. Like, fuck it. Like, you don't have to like hit him with your hip. <laughs> so playoff Bob too is uh, seems to be Who? finally no here. Yeah. Um, it took him 20 years. So moving on, let's uh, let's try to keep these short. Uh, oh, it's, we'll go over to you with the uh, Islanders Penguins series so far. Uh, almost kind of the same same thing. Uh, I knew the I had a feel not I knew, but I had a feeling that the Islanders were going to end up pulling this one out. I just thought it was going to be like in six or seven games. I mean, they have played Pittsburgh to a T, and it got to a point to where in the first game Pittsburgh tied it up late in in the game very easily the islanders could have just said oh shit this is here. so real quick jordan Ev- i was just about to touch on it very serious before today and then they fucking won three to one yeah. or four to one i mean the fucking he had zero goals in 13 playoff games for the oilers and he has three goals in three games for the islanders right now i mean it's funny hey he only had two assists in in those 13 with the Oilers. Hey, Edmonton, yeah. remember when you wanted a winger for <laughs> – yep. I was going to say – that. That Man, Connor McDavid could really use a winger. I wish we had somebody like Jordan Everly <laughs> and not Ryan Strom, who we flip for Ryan Spooner, who no longer plays for the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> Let's talk about making up cap space. Um <laughs> How about Robin Leonard here? Uh, first playoff appearance ever. Three for three in wins. A 9.51 save percent. Um, Robin Leonard's just been crushing it, though. I mean, people did not know going into the series since this is his first time. And, I mean, he's had issues, obviously, before with, uh, you know, going into big games and being confident going into those games. He's been unbelievable. I feel like the Penguins can just not figure him out. I mean, no. Crosby snake bit, and he's so fucking frustrated right now. Mm-hmm. And he, I mean, they all are. Malkin is just two handed people left and right. That fucking the Russian mean machine is coming out in him, and he is getting yep. frustrated and doing anything he can to hurt somebody. And he's just, yep. he's not having a good time. I mean, Phil Rip, Phil ripped one home first game, and like he's been scoring here and there, but Phil's you know how be- Phil is. Oh. He yells all the time anyway. So I mean, yeah, I know. they are just snake bitten right now. And at, I, I don't know. I Do you think it's just because they've played so much hockey the past, like, four or five years? I mean, it's just they've got to be tired. Nah, you're you're facing the best defensive team in the NHL. That, like, that, that yeah. does not yeah. happen for, like, a reason. Like, they literally showed a stat tonight that was, like, Islanders were 31st in the NHL in defense last year. Oh, this yeah, year, yeah, yeah. They were first. Yeah, that's Barry Trotz. Barry Trotz 100%. is an unreal coach. He he oh, has to win okay. Coach of the Year this year. Like there's he has to. Yeah, like if he's up for it, he's clearly winning it. But like, it also has to do with the fact that like they did bring in Robin Lehner, and Robin Lehner is fucking awesome. He's always been awesome, but like we all, I mean, I guess not we all, but like us have seen like what happened and what Word. he went through and Word. have like have Word. have like seen like he was in depression. He had a lot of shit going on. Yeah, there was you know, there was the NHL nineteen stats and <laughs> that I sent right. uh, but he he has been amazing. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Crazy turnaround. No, absolutely. Um crazy to say the least. But he he's been fucking just a rock solid player, but also they had Thomas Grice. Like they're the William M. Jennings fucking trophy winners. Like they are a really good defensive team. And no what no one knows is like you guys texted me the other day and was just like, oh, they're 0 for five on the power play. And I was like, fuck that. Doesn't matter. Defense wins championships. And they're fucking crazy awesome defensively. It's not looking good for the Penguins. No, down three nothing. Be there soon. Yeah, I'm super. Um, I'm super fucking excited about the Penguins losing. Let's. Uh, yeah, I'm and, all for it. Yeah. How How about? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. We don't have to get into it though. But uh, how about the fucking Coliseum? I mean, 
Honestly, I don't know. If, I, didn't, I mean, the Penguins were played really well the first two games. I don't think the Islanders win that first game if it's not at the Coliseum. And it's going to be a shame when they move on to the second round and it's in fucking Brooklyn. Yeah. It's oh, going to be a different feel for sure. All right, fucking... Yeah, I mean, they're going to play Washington, so... Yeah. Also, we spent a lot of time right now on this. <laughs> yeah, so moving on, so speaking of Washington... Uh, Tanner, you want to take that? Tanner. Oh, Washington, Carolina. Um, yes, please. That series looks fantastic, actually. Everybody thought that Carolina was just going to get smoked. Peter Morazic. Holy shit. Has he played like a fucking hero? And game one, you got Sveshnikov. Also, I'm going to toot some Blackhawk horn right now. I told you guys about this earlier. Uh, Sveshnikov played 82 games this season, had 37 points. You know who else did the exact same thing? Dominic Cahoon, the big fucking Cahuna on Blackhawks. Uh, I don't give a shit that he's not 18. I'm all about that fucking kind of life right now, though. He's fantastic. Sveshnikov, fucking two goals, first game. Fuck yeah, way to go. Jordan Stahl is a monster. I don't know if you guys watched game two. Fucking Tom Wilson went at Jordan Stahl, and Jordan Stahl put him on his fucking ass. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Did you fucking see that? It was, he braced himself for his own hit, and Jordan Stahl was just like, fuck you. I don't give a shit. Jordan Stahl is probably, like, my favorite underappreciated player after I saw that I go oh yeah Jordan Stahl's still a human being and he's fucking awesome at it. I know what else he went third overall in this draft oh yeah <laughs> uh, let's talk about his draft by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wait it was Ovechkin no 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 no, no. that's not the right draft no, uh, not. not even close Jordan anyways St- no yeah. Jordan Stahl was third overall what was the draft what was it, uh, what was it? I don't know it so, so here you're yeah. talking all about how amazing Carolina's doing, and they are down 0-2 in the series. Yes. Well, <laughs> uh huh. Okay. If you saw Game Two, fucking John Carlson also absolutely playing fucking unreal. John Carlson had a chance at the end of Game Two before it went to overtime uh. to end the fucking game with like two seconds left. Peter Morazic said, "Nah, not about it." TJ Yoshi karate chopping Justin Williams stick out of his hand. Like, the fact that he was able to say balance. The stretch and the kick that TJ Yoshi just did. Yeah, it was straight into the cell. Nice. It was nice. It was fucking good. Like, I fucking love that shit. Tampa sucks. Ten is up, but Carolina can still beat them. Don't worry about why. I'm excited for Carolina at home. Carolina at home, they're yeah. not gonna wear. They're not gonna wear the whites like the owner hates. They're yeah, a that's why they lost. Jerks. They're a bunch of fucking jerks over there, and they're gonna like just have fun. And Justin Williams is gonna be game fucking seven guy, and that's where they're gonna go. And he's just gonna end it, and it's gonna be fine. I mean, how about fucking Nikki Backstrom just playing fucking just bingoing oh, all day? He's it. got three goals already in the series. That I mean, first he's goal. Fucking, yeah, his first just, fucking be goal between the legs. I uh, forgot what defenseman. Between the legs, just top fucking shelf bar down. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, God. He's just – I mean, it's just showing that this – they know what it takes to win, obviously. They just won last year. But they're all so versatile. They they know what it's going to be to yeah. win. They know what kind of run it's going to take. And right. I honestly, I still – I would put my money on them right now still. Like, I, I know they've blown a couple leads in the first two games against Carolina, but they – they don't. They don't look faltered like at all. No matter what's going on, like they're just ready to go. What's crazy is like I I don't see them losing this, but like, Carolina's talk, making uh, it a series. We Carolina's making it a series, but Columbus is fucking on a tear. I would be afraid to see Columbus, and if they saw them in the conference finals, if Columbus makes it that far, I'm like fuck. My money's on Columbus all day. This yeah. series is this series yeah. is actually kind of reminding me of last year, uh, the Knights King yeah. series where the Knights swept, but every game was so close, close. that it was like yeah. it could have yeah. gone either way. Yeah, 
Definitely. Noli, take us to the moon with uh, Toronto and Boston. Oh, let's go. So, series tied 1-1. If you told me that going back to Toronto that they would be up, they would be tied 1-1, I'd be stoked. And I am. It's great. Game one, Toronto was all over Boston. They used their speed. They were in their head. They they blocked passing lanes. They Boston and Bruins were so fucking frustrated. Marshan said after the game, we, did, we didn't think it would be this hard. Are you fucking kidding me? You're in Marshan's head of all people. Like, play your fucking game. They tried to match the Leaf speed, and they blew fucking past them so much. Like, they, they could not stand him. Mitch Marner gets a fucking penalty shot. Uh, shorthanded for, the like, the fifth time in NHL history or something like that. I don't even remember what it was. Shorthanded like, are you kidding me? Like, about a Tuka, shot, really, though. Tuka couldn't follow that. If he stick hand, he stick handled inside the crease. Yeah, that yeah. last move. Who can, do, move. That? Who can do that? That's filthy. So going into game two, they dress David Backus because they dress David Backus because they want to slow. They want to play the Boston Bruins game. Which hey, that that's your game. That's what you guys do. Like if you're gonna slow down a fast team, you gotta you gotta hit them. You gotta get in their head, and that's exactly what the fucking Bruins did. The Bruins were all over the Leafs the second game. The most frustrating part is not only in this series, but a lot in this series, because this is the one I paid the most attention to, the refs have been fucking atrocious. And we didn't even mention that Carolina-Washington series. Furland got a five and a game misconduct for intent to injure. That was a bullshit call. Yeah. He should, yeah. That, if anything, give him a two for maybe elbowing. That, that's not a five, and that's not a game misconduct. And also, you don't want to see, you don't want to see Rod the Bod ever do that ever again because he's going to rip somebody's head off. Yeah. But I mean, it's just it's so inconsistent. You I, I was watching highlights from the game today and it's like there's so many calls that the, the refs just let go because it's just the Bruins and they're playing playoff hockey, but that's the Bruins style of play and they know what to get away with. The Leafs don't play like that, so they don't know what they can get away with. They're a fast paced team that plays under the rules. They had the least amount of penalties, they had the least amount of power plays all regular season. How is that a team that that's fast have that little amount of power plays? They, I mean, it's just, and and then I mean, you got fucking um, DeBrusque running out there with his fucking head cut off, doing anything he can to hurt anybody. The fact that he didn't get a penalty on that Kadri hit, I don't think he tried to hurt him. I don't think it was intentional to kneeing. It has yeah, to be called. Knee. It at ten out of ten times that's called every fucking time, every time, no matter what happens. If Kadri jumps out of the way to get out of the way to hit, it's still a kneeing call and it's still a penalty. And that's bullshit that they didn't call. It. If you call that penalty, maybe what Kadri did later in the game doesn't happen. That's what yeah. I was gonna say. If the refs were had well, more control of that it, that game, there's there not so Kadri is that not were that led to what Kadri did. Not saying that what Kadri did is okay. Hundred percent, no. It that doesn't get to that point. Dumb. But exactly, it doesn't get to that point. What Kadri did was selfish. It's back to back years against the Bruins, the same fucking spot in Boston. It's bullshit, and it he took himself out of the game where it was a three one game with. Six minutes left to go in the game. The the Leafs were all over the Bruins. The, the shots were eleven to four that period again for the for the Leafs. They were buzzing, and that just killed them. That was that game was, over. You, you that was game over. You said it. Yeah. That was game over. That was it. What are they gonna do? There was literally like the rest of the game they were gonna be killing, and Boston yeah. ended up scoring. And that was it. I mean, it's yeah. just, and he's probably gonna be done for the rest of the series because he's he's just making stupid stupid plays. Like like we said earlier, it's it's. Like what Kucherov did. It's just a guy not being able to control his emotions and just doing something stupid out of frustration. He's got an in-person hearing, so there's a solid, solid chance it's going to be five plus. He got three games last year. This I don't think this was as bad as what he did last year, as in like intent to injure wise. And of right. course, you know, as soon as he got tossed from the game, um, DeBrusque is up in arms, like yelling at him like he's a tough guy. And it's like, okay. all right, dude, you were just you were just dead on the ground a minute ago, like. Whatever, but I, obviously I don't want a guy to get hurt or anything like that. It's just a stupid, selfish play by Kadri, right. and now the, the Leafs oh, have yeah. got to go on without him, and he's a big-time player. I mean, he had a great fucking goal in that game, too. Like, he, he's the reason that they almost had a comeback going. Yeah. Game just, one, he had an unreal pass that went through yeah. four players. That he's sprung awesome. Nylander on a breakaway, so absolutely. He's yeah. so frustrated because, like, he can, like, help so much defensively and, like, on a penalty kill – and then he does like dumb shit like that. It's like he's... you want him to be in the fucking game, and you want him to be that aggressive. And then he pulls like stupid shit 
that pulls him out of the fucking rest of the series. And, and you're just, and he's just hurting his own team. It's just, yeah. it sucks. But <laughs> stupid. Big, big thing is game one, Bruins wanted to match Bergeron with Tavares. Obviously, that did not work out. So game two, they switch it up. They put Bergeron matching up with Matthews. Leafs get Leafs get to do the matchups now. Yeah. Oh. Leafs, game one, they were like, "Give me that fucking Bergeron on Tavares all day long." They could not handle Tavares's line. Game right now. Let's fucking go. <laughs> game three and game four, Leafs can do whatever the hell they want. I I I like. Ooh, I, also, not Boston having Kadri like sucks, no but Boston has like no defense right now. Crew out. Crew's they have out. Yep. Chara is terrible. Yeah, Muzzin out. blew him up. Holy Krug shit. Was, Krug was looking like a brand new baby deer out there. Hey, how about uh, 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 fuck, uh, Trevor Moore blowing up Kadri too? Or uh, Chara, I mean. Uh, oh, yeah. God, yeah. yeah. Seven oh, tall, my God. He's taller than he is. Dude, Chara is so old and overrated. He's not a good defenseman. Boston Bruins also, defense is not good anymore. It's not he's good. He's terrible on his feet, too. I mean, yeah. he's it's a so, big guy, but I mean, I feel like me. it's not hard to knock him over. All, all you have to do is blow past him, and it works because he drew, he took a couple penalties just because he can't keep up anymore. It's yeah. just, I still like the Leafs in this series. I think they're going to come out with it. It's going to be a rough series. I mean, I said in seven, so I mean, I'm sticking to it. So, but it's just, all right, here, before we move be on, a long series, man. before we move I on, love, the next one. I just love the, the tweet by you that was Boston Bruins defense is worse than the Leafs defense. Convince me otherwise. <laughs> change my mind. Change well, my, change my mind. mind, man. Let me, sip, let me sip on that coffee real quick. So, you got all fucking, right. You got Morgan Riley, Jake Gardner, uh, Jake Muzzin fuck, against Chara, Krug, and McAvoy. <laughs> Feed it to Ron, me. Not even Ron, Krug anymore. Ron yeah, the Sniper Hainsey? Ron the Sniper Hainsey as well? Let's fucking you the go. Stanley Cup, you the Stanley Cup champion, Ron Hainsey? Come on. So, before we, so let's, before we move over to the West, Noy, let me ask you this. Is it a must win for both these games for Toronto? Or are they in good shape if they still win at least one at home? You got to win at least one. I don't think they need to win both. If they win both, that's fucking huge because then you can win in six. I think you, yeah. you can lose on the road and come back and win at home. You got to take one. I think the Eastern Conference is way more controversial than the Western Conference because we get way more fired up about the Eastern Conference right now. And kind of feels like we don't really give a shit about the West. Well, I, I say well, when, when we were talking about West, what yeah, series we're going to take, I'm like, I was struggling to figure out what series we're in the West because it feels like the entire news is in the East. Honestly, well, like and the West the, is the only team that could win in the West right now is Calgary. And I don't think they will because of fucking Mike Smith. Like, <laughs> but let's go on. Keep going with the East. Oh, it's well, your turn. The West. <laughs> Thanks for paying attention. Uh, the West is going as, as expected, and the East is totally flipped upside down. You know, huge reason as to why it's it's such a big storyline. Everything in the East. Not not many people can pay attention to the nine thirty starts like this Vegas game going on right now. But um, Vegas, Vegas is up, Vegas is up two zero. So yeah, let's just jump into it since we're talking about it. Go ahead, uh, Vegas San Jose. Let's go. I literally hey. just noticed that fucking Jets won fucking six to three. Holy shit! Yeah. Thank God. Um, uh, Wait, hang on. Hang on. Patch ready, two goals, three assists. Mark Stone, four goals. Paul Stassi, four assists so far. Sorry, they just put it up on the TV. I want to throw it out there. That line is unreal. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, huge storyline going into this series was going to be goaltending with San Jose, and it ended up being a huge, huge disaster. Game one, they ended up getting out of it alive. San Jose came out of there with a win. Game two, from the get-go, awful, awful goaltending from Marty Jones. Ended up getting yanked. I mean, really terrible. At looking at the stats, the Sharks' leader in save percentage is Aaron Dell with an 875. Jesus Christ. That's gross. That's terrible. Let's go play a hockey goaltender right there. You need well, someone that's hot. Flipping it to the other side, Mark Andre Fleury's had a pretty tough start. 899 save percentage going into this game. This game did not go very well for them at all. Right. Uh, Joe Belsky's fucking face did not yes. help Mark Andre Fleury. Took one right off the app. Came right back. Didn't care. Uh, Logan Couture uh, might not be able to have kids anymore. I did an interview with him though, where he's talking with like the fattest lip in the world, and like they just he just was like. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, playoff you know, hockey. We came out with the fucking W. 
Also, they won like fucking what five to one, four to one. Like they five, fucking five two. they their five third two. period was insane. Oh, actually, it was like five to two. Fucking Mark Stone on fucking real, put in like two fucking Genos. Anybody's more excited to score a goal than Mark Stone right now? Love it. Oh, yeah, Mark I love how excited. Oh, actually, actually, not just right now, Matt always Duchesne. excited. Yeah, Bad Duchesne and Mark Stone yeah. are so happy. They're on OV level. Hockey and be out of Ottawa. They are the best players in the playoffs right now. I guarantee it. They are fucking unreal. It's it's. This series last year was really fun to watch, um, and it's been pretty fun to watch so far this year. San Jose just scored to make it two to one with four and a half left. So, I mean, I'm I'm always pretty excited to watch these games. Um, Vegas is bumping right now. The T-Mobile uh, Arena is going absolutely insane. Um, it's also four and a half left in the first period. That's. <laughs> Oh, I want to make sure. You said four and a half left. I was like, oh, third period? Oh, yeah, sorry, in the first. First period. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know. It should be a good one. I think this one's going to go the length still. I think I said this one going out to seven. So I yeah. still think that this one's going to end up going the length anyway. So. Absolutely. Moving on, Jerem. Uh, so the other game in the West was played today, uh, Winnipeg and St. Louis. Uh, the series is two to one. The Blues are leading. Um, this was another one that I was like, this, I'm not surprised at all by this. The uh, St. Louis can, has been so on fire. This Can I just say that biggest storyline, Patrick Line has got goals in every single game so far. Yeah. It took till game three for Winnipeg, other than Lyon, to figure out Jordan Bennington. Somebody fucking check out his Fortnite stats. And <laughs> he's been slowing it down a bit. <laughs> because that's the only thing that makes sense. No more Fortnite in the playoffs. Um, yeah, so St. Louis, the first two games, what was it? Let me pull the scores real quick. My bad. Uh, where'd they go? Two to one. It's two to one the first game, and then 4-3 the second game. So, I mean, they're close games, but, uh, I mean, the difference right now was just Bennington. Um, first game, I'm pretty sure they scored late in the third to end up pulling that one out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, no. No, first game it was uh it was one nothing. Yeah, it was one nothing going to the third. And uh St. Louis came back and scored two. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah, Tyler yeah. Tyler Bozak, big uh big Toronto guy. Um <laughs> game <laughs> Um yeah, so I mean this is one of those series too where it's like I I'm not surprised either way what's gonna happen here. Um I didn't get to watch I'm game three. Um because got my I'm, goddamn NBC app won't let me log in for some reason. I'm more surprised that Winnipeg got swept at home and then St. Louis comes back home and loses. Like yeah. that's yeah. Those are two tough buildings I feel like to play in because they're both so loud. But I, Winnipeg over the past couple of years, I don't. They haven't been good at home. How about well, that? I, how about the St. Louis, Louis fan Louis too in so Winnipeg with the big dick energy, rocking the old school blues I love jersey? That guy. Fucking fantastic! I thought that was hilarious. I hate blues fans, but that guy was yeah. hysterical. What? Which guy? There's a picture of it was just the entire the whiteout and there's one yeah. guy in the old school blues jersey just in the middle. The little be- BDE. It's fucking awesome. A little big thick energy. Speaking um, of hometown crowds and whiteouts, but also the Sea of Red. Blackhawks. Let's jump into the Calgary, Colorado. Tanner. Oh fucking right, Calgary, Colorado. What a fucking series we got here. Holy shit. Goaltending matchup like fucking crazy. I know I called Calgary not to be able to win it. Mike Smith went and fucking was just like, I'm going to get a shot fucking game one and show you it's 27 saves. No big deal. Half of them are fucking windmill fucking saves. And I was like, are you kidding me, Mike Smith? Like, this is not how we do this shit. And then fucking... Like Mangia Pain, which apparently is a tap bread, <laughs> scores his first goal in the playoffs, scores game one from his knees, backhand, nasty, don't worry about it. Fucking, this game is the best goaltending matchup, I think, of any fucking playoff series that we have going on right now. 
even though it was what two to three and overtime, it is the nastiest fucking goaltending matchup. You watch fucking incredible. The save Grubar makes out of nowhere. They go down game two. Fucking Nate McKinnon snipes bar fucking down. Sickest fucking goal in the playoffs. Easily, easily right now. Nate McKinnon has fucking got that was so fucking unreal. And there's so much chippy shit going on in these games, too. Yeah. I love playoff hockey is my favorite thing just because there's so much heart out there. Like the only other part about the playoff hockey that we've seen that I really enjoyed is fucking Braden Point and Zach Varinsky just fucking fighting. Because this series has all of that, too. Like, everyone hates everyone. And that's just the best fucking shit. And then, oh, oh, I keep forgetting. Matthew Kachuk. He was in He was in Johnson's head from the get-go. Johnson's been stupid and playing into it this whole time. You, you saw that shit on Instagram and everything where Jack Johnson fucking... Wait, no, that was against the Islanders. Oh, I was thinking about Jake Johnson. Eric Johnson. Eric Johnson, that's right. I haven't seen that shit then. Um, welcome to... It's going to be hard for... Game life. <laughs> it's going to be hard um, going into Colorado tied at one for the Flames. They're going to come out... I don't think so. Well, They're no, gonna... they also they also do have uh, Kale, Kale McCarr coming from... That's uh, going to be really interesting to see. And that's gonna and, be fucking. That's gonna be pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, but fucking, like, fuck you, like, you, like, like I said before, just between us, like, Nate McKinnon is just a fucking playoff difference in himself, and that guy literally turned a fucking nothing series last year into a fucking playoffs, like fucking oh shit, like we could lose kind of series last year, like. He fucking got the game winner. Like, he is so goddamn fucking disgusting. You, like, Calgary can be up three goals and then fucking Nate McKinnon. I want him on any team ever. Like, he is fucking awesome. Out of the first round here, tied 1 1. Dallas comes out on top of the first game. Don't think anybody saw that coming, honestly. No. Especially in Nashville. Um, the start, Brian Boyle absolutely ruining um, what's his face. Uh, I can't remember yeah. his name right now. Off the top I of my can't head. think of his name either. But yeah, I mean, him. Um, that's a tough building to play in. Uh, Nashville's power play has been garbage all year, and that is not helping them this this series so far. I mean, Dallas looked good. I they I know they don't have depth scoring, and Nashville really has the deepest fucking lines, and their defense is great. Pekka's playing. Pekka playoff hockey right now, I think, in that first game at least. And, I mean, it's just Dallas shuts them down. Like, Dallas is shutting them down. And Dallas's top goal scorers compared to Nashville's top goal scorers, I'm taking Dallas's all the time. Matt Zuccarello is on a fucking mission now that he's actually playing meaningful hockey. Yeah, no kidding. And, and Tanner's boy Ben Bishop is playing really well too. Ben Bishop, baby. That's what I want to bring up. <laughs> um. My favorite thing so far as a series is Roman Pollock taking one to the yips, and then uh, <laughs> Nashville gets the OT winner out of I it. I saw that, and I could not tweet it fast enough. Be like, oh, no one's going to love this shit. Fuck that dude. I He's garbage. Anyways, um, I mean, Nashville played it. A one-year deal in Chicago for $1 million in 2019, 2020. <laughs> I mean, it would make sense after they signed Chris Kunis the one-year deal. Just keep yeah, no the kidding. fucking ruining my seasons. But, I mean, uh, I mean. It's just Nashville played a really good game, game two, but it's Dallas still took them to overtime. I mean, this series can go anyway. This is the one series where I picked Nashville, but after game one, I was like, fuck, Dallas could do this. Like, I know it was just game one and Dallas won, but I was like, Dallas could fucking do it. Uh, Unreal. So, yeah, I mean, this is this is this just like any series is a toss up. Honestly, it's it's going to be a good one. Yeah. There's been a total of eight goals scored in the series, and it's been scored by a different person every time. Nobody's got more than one goal. So, I mean, yeah, the score is coming from pretty much anywhere. Hey, thanks. It's like such a boring – it's on paper. It seems like such a boring (laughs) series, but 
It's Everybody like, said it was going to be such a low scoring series, but it's it's been a fun yeah, fucking it's series. A good, yeah. Every it's crazy too because it, it is playoff hockey, but like he's in their face every fucking series. I love it. It's great. Honestly, yeah. every series I can see going seven, besides Columbus and Tampa. Like I, that's the only series I don't see going seven. Opposite reason of what we thought at the beginning. But it's like they're already down three games to fucking nothing. Like. I know it's possible, but, like, they don't look like they want to win the fucking cup. What was that stat? None. Every team in the playoffs has a Stanley Cup winner on their roster besides the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, the last time a team didn't – the last time a team won the cup without a Stanley Cup champion on their team was 93, the year before the Rangers won. Yikes. Yeah, so it's 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 an uncommon thing, and it's funny. I'm pretty sure in our playoff predictions, I said, "Hey guys, when we talk about this series, I'm pretty sure we all could just say it's going four, right?" I mean, yeah, I'm just saying, <laughs> cut off the Tampa part. Like I I just said it was going four. <laughs> um, but no, I honestly, I mean, Tampa get Kucherov coming back game four, they could easily turn around. I, every series is a fucking coin toss right now. It's fun. It's playoff hockey, boys. It's back. Let's fucking live it up. Let's go, boys. Next time that we all talk here, it should be just about the end of uh, of the first round, if not maybe a game seven here or there. So uh, I'm excited. Boys, uh, let's thank Matt Ross one more time for coming on the pod. Give us oh, a little thanks, insight. A little insight on the old Florida Panthers. So Definitely got to have him uh, on again soon, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Next year, playoffs. There we go. Yeah. Be our go-to guy for the playoffs. There it is. Calling it right now. This was uh, episode 54. We didn't name it because nobody in the history of the Blackhawks has ever worn 54. We'll call it the Rossi. Rossi. The Rossi? The okay. Rossi. There you go, Rossi. We love you. All right, I'm tuning out. I got to go watch Game of Thrones. Bye, fellas. Love you, boys. See ya. Follow the boys on Twitter at WCB Podcast, on Instagram at WCB Podcast, and like them on Facebook, the Windy City Badgers Podcast.